This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. The Florida Panthers are Stanley Cup champions with their win over the Edmonton Oilers last night. And that officially means we are into the summer months. That means the Olympics around the corner. That means we got the Tour de France coming up. We have got the NBA. We or we got the WNBA. We've got Major League Baseball. A lot of stuff going on. We're we'll featuring all that across the show here for the next couple of months. For today, it's the Commissioner's Cup in the WNBA as the Minnesota Lynx trying to knock off the New York Liberty. We're going to preview that game with Andy. Nader letting you know where she sees value for that game over at FanDuel Sportsbook. Then I'll talk some baseball later on as well. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research. Joined here to kick things off by Annie Nader. You can find her on X at anader33 and find her work over at FanDuel Research talking baseball throughout this summer, talking uh, WNBA, talking some NFL as well. Annie, appreciate the time. How you doing today? I'm good, Jim. Uh, Excited for the game tonight. It'll be a pretty good matchup and some financial incentives for these players. So that's always good. So yeah. Yeah. And I didn't know about that until I was reading about it last week. So I was confused what the commissioner's cup was, but Mm -hmm. uh, there is a, like you said, a financial incentive for the players to win this game, which is fantastic. It's not just the, the banner that the Lakers got for their end season tournament, but uh, we could see the links and the Liberty for tonight. Now, That'll be a fun game to watch, but last time we had you on, the Celtics were in the the midst of the NBA Finals. They have since won it all, so have you come down from the high of the Celtics winning yet? My come down from the high is just thinking about how they're going to repeat now. <laughs> but it's- it's a it's a quick transition in, but yeah, it's it's very exciting. It's a very Boston sports fan mentality to immediately stress about the next championship. Yeah, well, I we'll see, we'll see. Okay. Well, congratulations. I'm glad that worked out for you. I'm glad that uh, they got the job done early so you could kind of have a bit more of a stress-free past week or so. We're going to start things off by talking to Annie about the WNBA Commissioner's Cup, what to expect there, and I'll talk baseball in just a second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. We're going to have uh, some UFC coming up later on this week, some more Euro 2024 action once the round of 16 has been all set. So to get those shows as they are posted, Posted, make sure you're subscribed to covering the spread wherever you get your podcast if you like what you hear you can leave us a five-star rating on apple Podcasts or spotify you can also find the show on the fanduel youtube page and fanduel tv plus now annie the matchup for tonight in the commissioner's cup is the Lynx taking on the liberty the liberty being here is no surprise at all because they were one of the preseason favorites coming in the Lynx have been a bit more of a surprise but they've been fantastic so far this year so in your eyes what have the Lynx done this year to help propel them to this impressive start yeah so I think it starts with Nafisa Collier like having what could and probably should be the best season of her career like she's been a star for a while now was on the 2020 Olympics team is on this upcoming Olympics team rookie of the year all-star games like she has all those credits but she's I think this is her fifth season fifth full season um She's 27 years old. Like, this is really, like, I think the prime year of her career. I think we could argue right now, like, she's definitely a top five, two eight player, maybe even top three. And having that player helps, but it's not everything. It's it's all about surrounding her with the right pieces, which is really what they've done. If you look at what they did in the offseason, they brought in Alana Smith and Courtney Williams, who are, it's not two stars, but it's two players who fit really well, two new starters who can each score 10 points, each uh, help keep up uh, one of the best defenses, if not the best defense in the league. Also, what that allowed Minnesota to do is move some of their starters from last year to the bench. And so now they have a lot of really great depth. They've also been shooting threes like really, really well. I'm sure we'll see that come down to earth, uh, particularly with Kaylee McBride. She's shooting at like 46 percent or something right now. So there's a little bit of like overperformance there, but it's also just like they're really building a solid roster. Um, Last week we talked about like uh, transitioning from the NBA into the WNBA. And one thing I'm finding helpful is like drawing team comparisons. And for me, this Minnesota team is really similar to uh, what we've seen with the Oklahoma City Thunder. Both teams, they had their star. They were sort of fringe playoff teams hovering around 500. But then their star is sort of entering new years where it's like all of a sudden MVP caliber. And they're just surrounding them with the right pieces that can make up a really connected defense, um, right pieces on offense. Like it's just really working well together. So this is a team that's just like 
it's sort of as they're going on, it's like, yeah, they're going to do really well in the regular season. We'll see what happens come playoff time with a little more inexperience. But um, yeah, it's been an awesome start for them. Yeah, and the Thunder kept it up throughout the entire year. So I'm curious, you mentioned some regression in store for the Lynx. Can they do this for the entire year as well? Or do you expect them to cool off here in the pretty near future? I I mean, they have the best net rating in the league right now. I don't think I would bet on them to have the best net rating at the end of the regular season. But I do think that like this could very easily be a top two, top three seed. Um it, it really, I mean, since Vegas is so good, we know, but it's been underperforming. Like there's definitely room for other teams to see better regression. So I think that like, there's definitely a little room for cooling off, but like this just, I think we're seeing them in sort of their thunder year where they have their best player having one of her best seasons yeah. and have really found the right pieces to surround her with. Okay. So the Lynx uh, deserving, earning their spot in this commissioner's cup final as they take on the Liberty, before that game, the Liberty are favored by five, and that has come down a half point from where it was yesterday. So seems like there's been a bit of money on the links. The plus five for Minnesota is currently minus 112 at FanDuel Sportsbook. So are you tempted by either side of the spread in this game, Annie? Minnesota. I mean, it okay. stinks that it's down from five and a half, but I still think this is like not – like I think this is a really good number still. Like these are – the. Minnesota best net rating league, New York's right behind them. Like me siding with Minnesota is not an indictment of New York. Like we know they're a really great team, but Minnesota, their defense is really, really good. They've been, they have the best three point offense and best three point defense. We mentioned the financial incentives. I think that for Minnesota, that maybe matters a little more so just because they have less stars, less players getting like deals outside of basketball. New York also won the cup last year. Like It's not that New York's not going to have any incentive, but like this is a huge game for Minnesota. They've only lost three games this season. Two of those were just by one point. So it's not like we've seen them lose big games, really. And the one game that they did lose by more than a point was to the Aces. New York has like kind of dropped like random games. They lost to Chicago. They lost to Phoenix. Um, They don't, besides like Indiana and Atlanta, like they've blown out those teams, but they usually can keep things pretty close. Like this to me just seems like a game that's going to be very close. So getting five points here for the team with the best net rating, who's coming in with a pretty clean injury report, whereas we have some injury news potentially in New York. Like I definitely like that. Also, this is a home game for New York, but they're not playing it at Barclays because of the draft tomorrow. So they're going to have to go to UBS arena. So like that takes a little bit off of the home court advantage a bit. Um, But I just, I, I think this will be a really close game and, getting five points here, I still think is, is lovely. So when we had you on two weeks ago, you called the mystics, uh, you, you mentioned their spread and they won the game outright. Any temptation for you to take the, the money line with Minnesota plus plus one seventy six here, or is the flexibility when you've got so many stars on the opposing side, you know, if, if, if Stewie turns it on late, you kind of want that flexibility of the plus five instead. Yeah, that's definitely the case with New York, just because they have three players who can really like, They just, if you're finishing a game, like you want those three players that they have. But if I am targeting a Minnesota win here, I'd honestly think I'd prefer to do it in the Commissioner's Cup MVP market. Okay. um, Which is, I think if you go back, you can, yeah. Um, Collier here at plus 290. The the money line last night was plus 180 and she was plus 280 here. So we're seeing some positive movement if we're targeting this market. I just think like if Minnesota wins tonight, like, Collier has to have a good yeah. game. And also right now, like she would probably be the MVP for Minnesota's team. Caleb McBride's been doing awesome, but like I would still give it to Collier at this point. And if Minnesota's going to win, like it'll be because Collier had a great game. Like they can't afford for her to have a bad game. So I think I'd rather just do the spread. And then if I was going to try to target a different line, I think I would just do it in the form of the MVP here. Cause we're getting a pretty good shake. I think on her MVP chances. All right. I like that thought process a lot. So Collier plus two ninety to win commissioner's cup MVP. And again, the money line for them plus plus one seventy six. So getting a bit of a better number on that. And with the way Collier has played with her role in the team, it does seem like, if they were to win, it'd probably be on the back of Collier once again. Any player props stand out to you for this uh, final between the Lynx and the Liberty, Annie? Yeah, let's go to player combos and stick with Collier. Let's just double down on a good day. <laughs> um, over 29 and a half points and rebounds. That is at 
it's the number's been changing a bit perfect. Minus 108 is a great number on this, I think. So she's averaging 31.3 PR right now. She's exceeded this in 10 of her 16 games. But if we look back at last season and this season and look at all the games where she played more than 30 minutes, she's exceeded this number in 73.7% of those games. And we have every reason to believe she's going to play more than 30 minutes tonight. As we mentioned, this is a huge game. She's averaging nearly 35 minutes per game. Isn't really a foul trouble candidate that much. And if you just, I mean, it's a really great hit rate for that to be 73.7% for these minus 108 odds. Yes, that is games where she's played more than 30 minutes, but like this is a game where she's going to play more than 30 minutes. Um, so, and it's also just, it's a decent matchup. New York plays faster than Minnesota. Minnesota is one of the slower teams in the league. So I think it'll be a pretty good back and forth. And I just, I think this is a great number to get on that prop. Okay, again, that is Nafisa Collier. Points plus rebounds market over 29 and a half is minus 108 at FanDuel Sports. So for that, so we're all in on Nafisa Collier for tonight. Looking at the MVP market, plus 290. Looking at the links, plus five as a result of her. And hopefully a fun way to finish out this Commissioner's Cup. That is Annie Nadery. Make sure you find her on X at 8Nader33. Find all of her work over at FanDuel Research, talking baseball, WNBA throughout the entire summer. Annie, I appreciate the time. Once again, uh, enjoy the game tonight. We'll talk to you again soon. Thanks for having me on, Jim. Alrighty, again, you can find Annie on Twitter at Nader33. I'm going to dive in and talk some baseball here in just one second. But first, dingers, blasts, moonshots, whatever you call them, everyone loves home runs. With FanDuel's Dinger Tuesdays, you can love them even more. That's right. Dinger Tuesdays are back for another season on America's number one sports book. Just bet on a player to hit a home run, and FanDuel will give you $5 in bonus bets for every home run hit during that game. As if you needed another reason to love the long ball. Make every moment more. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball, must be 21 plus and present in select states. Bonus issued is not much trouble bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Max bonus $25 per game. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Kentucky, Michigan, New Jersey, North Carolina, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, Vermont, D.C., and Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text Next Step to 53342 in Arizona, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat Connecticut, 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana, 1-800-522-4700 visit chaosgamblinghealth.com in Kansas, 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana, visit mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland, 1-800-GAMBLER.NET in West Virginia, 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming. Hope is here. Visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY in New York. Let's dig in now to the baseball slate for tonight. As mentioned earlier on, it is, in fact, Dinger Tuesday for today. So we're going to start things off by talking about my favorite Dinger bet for tonight, taking into account the advantages we get with Dinger Tuesday at FanDuel Sportsbook. That's going to take us to this Braves-Cardinals game, in large part because it is very warm in St. Louis for tonight, 94 degrees, which is a great condition, great weather for home runs. And that may boost Brendan Donovan enough to make him a very fun bet at nine to one to hit a dinger for tonight. That's where I turn for our dinger Tuesday bet on this Tuesday. Donovan down a bit from 10 to one earlier on this morning, but I do do still like him at nine to one because he's been hitting the ball really hard this month. He has a 39% hard hit rate across the past 30 days. That's not an amazing number. But it is improving. He also has a 38% fly ball rate against righties so far this year. The increased hard contact has led to four home runs for Donovan in a pretty short sample. He's got eight total this year. Against righties, his ISO is 178 and again, a 38% fly ball rate. So again, not the most amazing numbers for Donovan, but they are improving. He is facing a righty here and we get really good weather for tonight. Donovan is facing Reynaldo Lopez, who has done an awesome job this year. His ERA is is phenomenal, but he's led up a 40% hard hit rate with a 41% fly ball rate. He pitches in a pretty tough park for pitching, but it is still, again, tough conditions for tonight in St. Louis with the temperature being so high. Donovan's batting in the meat of this order. 
So when you add in the batted ball numbers of Lopez with what Lo- what Donovan has done recently, I think 91 is pretty generous. And for Dinger Tuesday specifically, gets this exposure to all the powerful Atlanta batters and uh, the guys in this Cardinals lineup as well. So we're going to take Brendan Donovan 9-1 to one, to hit a Dinger for our Dinger Tuesday bet for today. Sticking with that same game, let's talk about the same the first money line I like for tonight. And no surprise if I'm on uh, Donovan to hit home run, I am on the Cardinals here. That is a plus 116 at FanDuel Sports. I, t- I talked before about how I'm expecting some regression for Lopez. That's part of it. But also, I really do like what Kyle Gibson is doing right now. And he's starting for the Cardinals for tonight. Gibson's been cutting back on his changeup usage so far this year. Instead, throwing more sliders and cutters. The slider specifically, or a sweeper if you go to Baseball Savant, has a 44% whiff rate according to Baseball Savant. So more sliders is a very good thing for Kyle Gibson. He also doesn't let up a ton of hard contact with that pitch. Only a 27% hard hit rate. So getting whiffs, suppressing hard contact, and throwing that pitch more. That's a big part of why Gibson has a 3.44 ERA over 14 starts this year. This Cardinals offense just got Wilson Contreras back last night, which is a big boost for them because he does uh, have a lot of power, and they're pretty desperate for that, and they are at home as well. This Braves offense, obviously, in the world of Acuna, they've been playing a bit better recently, but still not what they were earlier on this year. So I really do like the Cardinals to win this game. My model is the Cardinals as slight favorites in this spot at home, so I think that we can feel pretty good about getting them at plus 116 for tonight. Obviously, if we are on uh, the Burleson or the Donovan home run prop, we're on the Cardinals uh, money line. Those two bets are pretty heavily correlated. Uh, if you tie them together, that's uh, plus one uh, plus 1380. So uh, almost 14 to one on those two bets tied together as a, a two legs of a same game parlay. I do like Gibson over his strikeout prop at FanDuel Sportsbook. My one concern there is there could be some rain in this game. So if you want a third leg in this game for a three-leg same game probably I would check back on the weather later on to see what things look like there. And if we get the all clear, then maybe you lop on the Gibson strikeout prop. I actually think that the all strikeout number six plus strikeouts for, for Gibson plus 158 is not bad. You could instead, if you want to take out the Donovan home run number, go just the Gibson strikeouts and uh, the Cardinals to win. That is plus 310 at FanDuel Sportsbook for that two-leg same game parlay. So check back on the weather here. If we get the all clear, you can toss Gibson and his strikeout uh, numbers into a potential same game parlay for the Braves and the Cardinals. Couple strikeout props that I like for tonight. Both those are unders. Let's begin things with this Yankees versus Mets game. Garrett Cole in his second game back off the IL. And I want to go Cole under his strikeout prop. Now, this has moved pretty heavily since I was looking at this earlier this morning. He was under five and a half plus 120. It's now under five and a half and minus 104. I still think there's value there personally because I've got Cole projected at 4.85 strikeouts for tonight. So even at minus 104, this is still a value for me. Cole's facing the Mets, who are a low strikeout team. They have a 21.4% strikeout rate against righties this year. I'm still not sure what Cole's pitch count will be. That's a big part of why I want the under here. He did throw 68 pitches in one of his rehab starts. So that's his max so far because he went to 62 in his first big league start. I'm probably not expecting Cole to jump from a max of 68 back up to 90 when the Yankees are very clearly a team with their eyes in the postseason. I don't think they're going to push him to 90 right away. I haven't projected for 80. He might go beyond that, but I think that's probably a realistic median expectation for pitch count for tonight. I'm also not fully convinced of how effective we'll see Cole be here because he had a 9.7% swinging strike rate in his first start back this year. It was at 11.7% last year, which was down quite a bit from where he was previously. And also the velocity on Cole's forcing fastball was down from last year as well. If Cole were facing a higher strikeout team, that's one thing. Uh, I could understand having the five and a half, but when you combine a low strikeout team on the road, I know it's the same city, but like it's still on the road. Um, and with the fact that we're not sure what his pitch count will be, I think taking under five and a half, even at minus one Oh four is still a good way to play things. So we'll take Cole under five and a half strikeouts minus one Oh four at FanDuel Sportsbook. 
The final strikeout prop for me for today is going to be in one of the later games. We got Mackenzie Gore revenge game taking on the San Diego Padres for tonight. Gore's strikeout prop is at five and a half. It's under his mu- plus 112. And for a high strikeout guy with Gore, it may be surprising to go under here, but I do think that's the best way to go in large part because of the situation. Gore is on the road facing a super low strikeout team. The Padres have a 17.3% strikeout rate on their core active roster against lefties this year. So it's really tough to get strikeouts against a team like that. And Gore's been great. He has a 28% strikeout rate overall, but he's had a lot of starts at home recently. So you'll look at his game log and you'll see a lot of big strikeout totals, but a lot of those have come at home. He has made four consecutive starts at home, five of the past six, and he has gone over five and a half in three of his past four road starts. So I'm not saying just because he's on the road, we should take the under, but when you combine the fact that he is on the road, with facing a very low strikeout team, I have Gore projected for 5.17 strikeouts. That puts his under odds well above 50%. So getting plus 112 on the under here, I do think makes a lot of sense. So we'll take McKenzie Gore under five and a half strikeouts at plus 112. So MLE props I like for today, or bets I like for today, are McKenzie Gore under five and a half strikeouts plus 112. Garrett Cole under five and a half strikeouts minus 104. Like the Cardinals money line plus 116 with Brendan Donovan to hit a home run to nine to one. And again, you could consider Donovan Dinger, uh, the Cardinals money line, and some Kyle Gibson strikeout props if you need a same game parlay for today. That's all we got across this Tuesday. Want to give a big thank you once again to Annie Nader for joining us, breaking down tonight's WNBA Commissioner's Cup final between the Lynx and the Liberty. Uh, find Annie on X at a Nader 33. I am on X at Jim Sonis. You can also find FanDuel Research on X at FanDuel Research. Want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your WNBA and MLB bets. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow talking some NFL divisional futures. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 